What is up, Trunk Slammers? It's Monday. That means it's Spicy Monday. But it's not just any Spicy Monday. It's Spicy Cyber Monday. Doom, 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 doom. And I thought, what better to dunk on on this Spicy Cyber Monday than AI? Just to get it out of the way before we get started. This is not an anti-generative AI video. I'm not against the idea of assistive tools powered by algorithms and content aggregation. I actually think they're pretty cool. This is a video that's talking more about this idea that the current state of generative AI is some sort of magical solution that if we just bolt it onto anything, fixes all the problems. That's not how technology works of any kind. And it's never worked that way, but specifically with automation technology, which is really still what AI is. It is automation, automation based on algorithms that humans wrote that go in and ingest data that humans made and sometimes shitty data that other AI made and then uses that to automate some sort of task or process to arrive at a result that may look effectively like magic to us, but is really quite boring and really not that artificial or very intelligent at all. Before, before I get into it, just a little TLDR and a thought experiment for you. I assume many of you have seen or at least aware of The Fifth Element, the greatest sci-fi movie ever achieved by humanity. And in that movie, if you remember, when they first uh, awaken Lilu, Lilu has adult human, in fact, maybe even better than adult human level processing capability, but in terms of information and ability to use that capability is basically a potato. She's a toddler. She has soup brain. And an early part of the movie is sort of helping her work through the fact that she's terrified and scared of everything while yet having an ability to do quite a bit of, you know, raw output that is pretty impressive. And when they do get to the part of the movie where if you think of Lilu as basically a generative AI model that has the infrastructure and the algorithms for what to do with the data already built in, but has no data library, has, has no model yet to execute on. When they get to the part of the movie where they plug her into space Wikipedia and then just download all the raw data, well, what happens? That's right. Lilu gets really, really upset and pretty much nearly dooms humanity as a species to extinction. And it's not because she's bad or evil or made a bad choice. It's if you only ingest information that's already been prepared for you and you don't actually have the ability to think, then you won't think and you'll just react. And so Lilu reacted to the fact that a lot of the raw data that she ingested is kind of not great in the absence of being able to think and rationalize and have context and expressions and emotions and all the other things that make human brains so fucking cool and make our species so amazing compared to other species that can't do all of that. Lilu didn't have any of that. She just had raw data she ingested and based on that raw data, didn't really have a desired outcome. And, uh, well, unfortunately, with generative AI models we have now, Bruce Willis can't make love to them in, uh, you know, and save the world and teach them about emotion. I, I, I think that would be frowned upon. I mean, maybe you make out with your webcam at home. I don't think you're supposed to do that. So we don't have that as a solution, but yet our generative AI basically is in the same boat as Lilu. A super impressive computer has been built that has some super impressive algorithms in it. Can't do shit without data. And the quality of that data and how that data is inputted and ingested dramatically affects what that model is able to execute on. This is a really important concept. And I, I use that previous example half as a joke, but because it really illustrates it well. AI, the way we currently view a generative AI is a form of advanced automation. And if we look back quickly at the human history of automation, we have been automating things as a species since we first started walking or climbing or whatever, however our species started. In every case to automate something, and of course we've had different, you know, revolutions and ages of different technologies as we've moved through recorded history. But in every case, we needed something that a human could do by hand repeatedly that could be taught to other humans 
and then could be executed at an appropriate scale for that civilization. That already had to exist. And every time we got to a point where whatever that was, farming, metalworking, production, whatever, once we got to a point where with human power and human repeatability and human process, we had more or less reached the peak efficiency that civilization was able to do, that is when we would go back to whatever it was and identify what elements of labor, human labor, can I replace here with something else? And initially, that was other living things, animals. We'd use animal power for a lot of stuff. And eventually we learned how to harness things like wind and water, you know, windmills, water wheels, and sails and whatnot. Eventually, as we progressed even further, we started learning how to, you know, industrialize, use fuels and, and steam and water pressure. And all the way up to the modern era, where we started being able to have factories be semi-automated and then fully automated with robots, up until now where we have something that we're calling generative AI, which is just another example of this same pattern. Except it's not. Because in every other case, human, hum, humanity, humans, whatever, had figured out a repeatable way to do the thing already. There was an established process, and then we iterated and added the technology onto it. And that technology increased efficiency, increased output, and in most cases, reduced labor. Well, with generative AI, we didn't really do that. We just sort of skipped ahead and invented the technology. And now we're turning around and trying to figure out, well, what can we bolt this onto to make it work? Except in a lot of cases, it doesn't. Because if you don't already have that idea that there is a, a repeatable defined process and I am looking to make it more efficient or increase the output or reduce the labor by adding the technology on, if you just start with just the tech and try and go backwards, then it gets bolted on to a lot of things that it isn't particularly good or useful for. In the case of generative AI, because it is so reliant on the quality of input data in order to have any chance at having an output that we want, you run into the LILU paradox with our generative AI models, which is we very rarely get an output that's particularly good. It often isn't what we want at all. And the more we use it and the more it's able to interact with other content created by other AIs, the worse the output gets. And if we think back as humans, this kind of has never happened before with any sort of automation technology we've put in place. Because the first time I can think of at a large scale, we've skipped the process. And I don't think that's very smart. I'm going to give you a thought experiment that removes all the emotion you might have around AI and robots. And explains what I'm talking about here from a, both a service provider and a SaaS perspective, which is bolting on AI to everything without thinking about it. Go back in time a little bit. So the, the first water wheels that we know for a fact, they may have existed earlier than this, but the first water wheels we know for a fact uh, were being used by humans in a significant way, roughly fourth century BC. So we'll fast forward a little bit. And so let's Let's say somewhere in the you know year 100, uh, a, a Roman ship, because Romans were very big at mass-produced grain using water wheels because they had a human process they had then automated and were able to leverage technology to reduce labor and increase output. So a, a Roman ship somehow magically makes it across the Atlantic way before anybody else had and encounters uh, United States natives who we know for a fact never had water wheels for grain production at all. On this ship, they bring over a water wheel and they as assume everybody can communicate. They show it to the natives. The natives are like, wow, that's really cool. They explain what it does. And the natives are like, hey, that's awesome. Because remember, humans aren't dumb. So these natives aren't stupid. They get the premise. They understand, okay, we put the wheel in a spinning stream and it'll move and then it'll turn things that turn. And the Romans say a really great way to use this piece of technology is to grind up your grain into flour. And then they leave. And the natives are standing there like, huh, this is awesome. Let's go bolt this on to all of our grain production. It wouldn't work. And we know for a fact that every time things like this have happened in the history of our planet, where a more advanced civilization has brought an advanced piece of technology without the underlying supporting material process and context, it hasn't really worked out that great, or it's taken a very long time for it to work out great. So in our analogy here, these natives are not stupid. 
They have the same brains as these Romans. They get the premise, but they don't have the same backlog of process behind how to mass produce that kind of grain to be fed into that kind of infrastructure to then be able to use and store that kind of output. So best case scenario, best case scenario, after the initial novelty wears off after a few weeks, it just sits there unused by any of the local natives because it's actually not particularly useful, even though it's super cool and contextually they all understand why it should be useful. Their level of process is not mature enough to make use of it. And that's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is they do try to use it, even though their level of process maturity is super low and it destroys everything and nobody can eat that winter because they try to ramp up farming in a way that they're not able to support to feed this new machine's abilities, you know, input ability. They're able to produce a ton of flour that they don't normally produce. So now what do we do with all this flour? They have to preserve and store it and that fails. And so now suddenly an entire food economy collapses out of nowhere, even though an objectively better piece of technology was brought in that everybody was smart enough to understand contextually what it was supposed to do. And that kind of silly analogy that's the problem with generative AI right now. It's not that the tech itself, like that water wheel, that the tech itself is bad. The tech's kind of cool. It's, it's got some flaws. It's not perfect, but it's pretty interesting. The problem is that we're just slapping it on whatever, and we're contextually aware of what it should be able to improve, but it's being slapped onto things where either the, the supporting process maturity isn't there for it to have that effect, or the people offering it, the people who are offering to slap it on, don't actually know how to do any of the things it's supposed to improve. That's really common in the MSP channel where we see all these AI tools that are, oh, it fixes this, or it increases this level of efficiency, or this or that. And then you talk to these people and you're like, wow, you have no fucking idea how to run a help desk. You've actually never done this. You have no idea what the human level process is to execute on this by hand is. So how can you possibly develop an AI model that's going to make something you don't know how to do more efficient? And the spoiler is you can't. It then just becomes a very fancy tool that has a poor optimized interface. And unless the person who's using the tool has an exceptional level of understanding of how to do it without the tool, it doesn't get implemented properly and it does nothing. And it's potentially harmful, like we said. That's my big issue with generative AI or AI in our space right now. So if you're hearing this, what do you do? Well, if you're using generative tools to assist you in certain areas already of your workflow and your business, besides just being cautious at the quality of the output of the gener generative tools, which is getting shittier over time, because it turns out if you feed a bunch of robots, robot version of incest data, you will get robot incest data babies that are mutants. And, you know, we basically have generative AI, the hills have eyes now. So be aware of that. But more importantly, you got to remember that the current state of what we're calling AI, which is definitely not actual intelligence, it can't think independently. It can't understand the nuances of a situation and it cannot make decisions, especially not decisions based on what we would call common sense, because that's actually incredibly difficult. It's one of the main differentiators our species has above other species. It's really, really cool that we can do that. Generative AI cannot do that. So if you have a process that basically requires no decision-making or common sense and is a series of if this, then that style tables. And that process is refined and can be executed currently. AI is a good fit for you. RPA is a good fit for you. Automation in general is a good fit for you. You should add it in. You should look to reduce your labor cogs by adding in AI and automation to that highly repeatable decision-free process that is a series of if this, then that statements. If that's not your business, and if you're an MSP, that's absolutely not most of your business. And if you're a SaaS vendor, uh, you might think that's your business, but well, I've met a lot of you and I don't think... I don't think a lot of you have your products dialed in that way as much as you think it does, then you probably should not be bolting AI onto anything. I get it. 
there's this sense that if I don't add it now, I'm going to fall behind and not be able to use it. You know, first adopters win, but you're not a first adopter. First adopters did this two or three years ago. So that's already passed. You are not a first adopter. You're also not going to be a last adopter. You're at a point now where quality of adoption and quality of use and efficacy of use are more important than just adding it. So if you're currently one of those people that's rushing to either add AI to something or is building a product that somehow leverages AI as its core model, I just simply want you to stop and think if the computers went away tomorrow, do we understand what our product does well enough where we could pivot right now and have a sort of a human driven version of our product? I'm not saying you have to literally invent that, but if in theoretical land, if the answer is no, if you can't at least explain that to me in a boardroom, you don't really have a real product and you're misusing AI and you are going to run into my Lilu paradox from earlier. And well, at that point, does it really matter if you're the first adopter, if your supercomputer destroys the planet because it thinks that humans have nothing worthwhile saving? Because as we said earlier, you can't have Bruce Willis come in and sleep with your AI model to teach it about love. I don't think it's worth it. And Bruce Willis is only one guy and you can't fix all of our AI shit. Have a great Monday. I hope you find some awesome cyber deals that someone's AI algorithm has convinced you are actually worth buying today and are not the same price they were two weeks ago. Stay spicy.